here's my five most valuable tips in learning and developing your handstand applicable to any level. Tip number one, training at the right level. I like to partition the handstand practice into a variety of different levels depending on where you are in your handstand journey. Level one is for complete beginners and what we want to focus on is basically getting comfortable upside down. We want to develop the strength necessary to do a handstand. We want to develop awareness upside down and just not being afraid of falling. And we also want to practice our headstands to develop good coordination while upside down. Level two is all about learning to balance the handstand, learning to use your hands and the technique required to perform corrections when upside down in a handstand. We also want to develop handstand entries, especially focusing on the handstand kick up. Level three is making your handstand efficient and further developing your handstand. And here we focus on form, we focus on developing shapes and all the tiny details that makes up a perfect handstand. And level four is when we start our our one arm handstand journey. Each of these levels have many sub levels and drills to master, so don't rush it. I have specific tutorials for all of these different parts of your handstand journey, which I will link down in the description. Tip two is to focus on the right things. There are so many form cues out there and there are so many tiny details to focus on to make your handstand perfect. But trying to focus on all of these things at once will be far too overwhelming and you'll be ending up not focusing on anything at all. So to make it easier for you, I've made a list of priorities regarding these form cues. So consider focusing on one of these at a time, starting on the most important one. So priority one will be to get comfortable upside down, to develop the strength necessary for the handstand and learning how to fall. Priority two will be learning how to use your hands to balance. You can do this by any means possible, just focusing on actually using your hands to perform these corrections that we'll need to automate in order to balance the handstand. Priority three is keeping your elbows straight because if your elbows aren't straight, your handstand will be very inefficient. You will get tired super quickly. Priority four, is elevating your shoulders and keeping your shoulders above your wrists, both to protect your wrists as well as to have a more efficient handstand. Priority level five will be your head positioning. Avoid looking far ahead and avoid looking backwards. Try to look straight between your hands and don't stick your head out too much. Priority six will be to keep your hips above your shoulders. Now at this point, you can still have a slight arch. You can still have a slight pike in your hips. It doesn't matter. As long as your hips are above your shoulders, your handstand is gonna be pretty much efficient. Priority seven will be to flex your shoulders and posteriorly tilt your pelvis because these two go hand in hand. You can't do one without the other. That will result in you either plunging or over flexing your shoulders. This will require a lot of mobility as well. So you should already start practicing your shoulder mobility so that they're ready when these steps come. Priority eight will be pointing your toes and finessing your handstand, making that line and your handstand perfect. Tip number three will be to focus on one thing at a time. Focusing on too many things will have you end up not focusing on anything at all. For each drill you choose, focus on one thing at a time. When you can successfully implement this thing, move to the next. A good strategy is to introduce a concept in a headstand, then in a wall-assisted handstand, then for the freestanding handstand. If, for example, a posterior pelvic tilt is your focus, start experimenting with this in a headstand position, then move to the wall and then to the freestanding, always focusing on this one detail without too much distractions from other things. There is, for example, no point in focusing on a posterior pelvic tilt in a freestanding handstand if you struggle on balancing your handstand. Tip number four, don't believe the myths. There are a lot of handstand myths around that will prevent you from developing your handstand in the most efficient way possible. Do not look backwards, look straight down between your hands. Core strength is not important and there are more relevant places to put your focus. Instead of wasting your time with planks and sit-ups, work on your shoulder mobility, your strength and your awareness, which is what will actually help you master the handstand. Your shoulders do not actually need to be flexed or open. In the long term, this is obviously going to be your goal, but it is far from a requirement and it will take a long time to develop the required mobility. So don't beat yourself up for not having a straight line. 
Work on your mobility on the side, and then when you're ready, you can implement this into your handstand. In most cases, learning to handstand will not take weeks. It will take months, or even a year or more, depending on your level. Learn to enjoy the process, make intermediate goals such as learning to do headstand shapes, handstand kickups against the wall, wall walks, 30 second wall assisted handstand, and so on. There are many goals to be celebrated before the freestanding handstand. Remember to celebrate these achievements too, because they are achievements. Tip five, consider these simple musts when training your handstand. Always look down between your hands, no matter the drill. Even when working on shoulder mobility, we want everything to be as relevant as possible. And when we do our handstands, we look down between our hands. So consider doing this for whatever drills you are choosing. Spray your fingers and squeeze the ground. This will help your balance and it will help you get a feel for the corrections required to balance the handstand. Fingers pointing forwards and not to the side. This will give you a lot more leverage to work on when balancing your handstand. Working on your wrist strength and mobility to avoid injuries a must. Consider doing different kinds of wrist push-ups a couple times a week. Start working on your shoulder mobility as early as possible using drills such as these. When your handstand level gets better, already having a decent amount of shoulder mobility will be hugely beneficial. Use a variety of drills with specific focus points and start structuring your handstand practice. Consider doing three to five sets of a drill focusing on balancing, a drill focusing on awareness of your legs, hips and spine when upside down, in the beginning using headstands, then wall assisted drills and eventually freestanding drills. Use a technical drill focusing on entering the handstand, such as wall assisted handstand kickups, then eventually freestanding kickups, or even jump up variations for the more advanced practitioner. You should always use a drill where the main focus is a specific form cue. Here you can use the priorities I introduced earlier. Use a drill for strength and endurance, although just practicing your handstand will also take care of this. So this is not strictly a must, but can be beneficial in the long term. You can also feel free to split up these drill categories and focus on different things on different sessions. The possibilities are endless. If you want these tips and drills and many more conveniently structured into handstand programs and workouts, be sure to check out my app. You'll also get access to a variety of bodyweight strength programs for all levels, community forum where you can share your ups and downs, videos and get personal feedback. And there's a seven day free trial so you can test it out before you buy it.